when you're insulin resistant, that is you've got metabolic syndrome, pretty much every chemical in the body is not quite right. Some are up, some are down, few are actually at physiologically normal levels. Traditionally, the focus is on the big guns, sugar, insulin, and cholesterol. In this series, we take a look at some of the other players, who they are, what they're up to, and how they're part of the state of insulin resistance. In this episode, we feature saliva, or mouth juice. Now, when you're insulin resistant, you produce less saliva, and the composition of the saliva is altered. This problem manifests as a dry mouth. When it's bad enough to notice, it's referred to as xerostomia. And you really only notice when there's a 40 to 50% loss of function in the salivary glands. But long before this happens, you will be experiencing the consequences of salivary hyperfunction because saliva is a magical elixir which protects, lubricates, and hydrates oral surfaces of the mouth. You need it to swallow, to talk, to taste, and to chew, and it influences who lives in your mouth. And this determines how healthy your teeth and gums are. And this, in turn, impacts heart, brain, and lung health. So, what is it? Well, it's a spectacular complex fluid containing over 2,000 different proteins made by the salivary glands. A few are unique to saliva. Most are not. In fact, salivary glands are able to produce insulin. It's glands with an S. They are big ones, which are referred to as the major salivary glands. These include the parotid, sublingual, and submandibular glands. And then there are the minor ones. Lots of them. These are dotted throughout the oral cavity. In a single day, you will make and swallow somewhere between 0.6 and 1.5 liters of saliva. But at any given point in time, there is around 0.7 to 1 milliliter of saliva in the mouth. Eating turns on the tap. But when you're resting, saliva is still produced. Levels are at their lowest first thing in the morning around 6 a.m. and reach their peak 12 hours later, around 6 p.m. Their production is regulated by the autonomic nervous system. Both sides contribute. The parasympathetic nerves control the amount, and the sympathetic nerves control the composition. So, why is there a trickle and not a torrent when you're insulin resistant? Well, no one knows for sure. Saliva gland atrophy has been suggested. This is sparked by decreased nerve stimulation or poor microcirculation. In the case of insulin resistance, this is arising because of the hyperinsulinemia, and it differs from the atrophy that happens in Shogun syndrome, which is an autoimmune disease brought on when the immune system continuously takes pot shots at the salivary glands. In the case of insulin resistance, the worse your body chemistry, the bigger the problem. Initially, the troubles are due to microcirculation problems, and this manifests early. Studies suggest overweight kids already have signs of salivary hyperfunction. Poor glycemic control just takes things up a notch. As the excess sugar is cleared by the kidney, it takes body water with it, precipitating dehydration along with the neglect. Now, a dry mouth is not just a nuisance. It has serious health ramifications. It impacts teeth and gums. It hurts the mouth and leads to difficulties chewing, talking, and swallowing. So it is something that should be on your radar. Addressing the bad body chemistry is going to be the place to start. But it is a little unfair to blame all salivary problems on insulin. There are a host of other things that can put strain on salivary gland function. Things to consider are smoking, the use of alcohol, particularly alcohol-based mouthwashes, the consumption of caffeine in the form of coffee and soft drinks, snoring and mouth breathing, upper respiratory tract infections, fear and anxiety, and meds. Over a thousand medicines have been shown to induce dry mouth. Quite a few categories of drugs are known to be problematic. 
the categories include antidepressants antipsychotics anticholinergics these are drugs that are used to treat asthma overactive bladder parkinson among other things antihypertensives antihistamines sedatives and antidiuretics if you're taking a drug which is having a negative impact on your salivary function discuss whether it would be possible to substitute or discontinue the medication with your doctor don't ever just stop any medical treatment you're on what if you cannot prevent it are there ways to mitigate it well the strongest stimulant for saliva production is chewing and mouth movement Unfortunately, eating and drinking all the time has its own set of issues. Fortunately, there are other options, each with their own pros and cons. A technique with a lot of pros and only one con is to do the tongue hula 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 hoop. To do it, you rotate your tongue around the edge of mouth slowly a couple of times, alternating between circling clockwise, then anti-clockwise. The technique costs nothing and it works like gangbusters. Saliva levels increase by 25% and they stay elevated for a little while. The con? Well, <laughs> you look a little stupid. So you might not want to do this one in public. But it's okay to do it next time you're prompted by your phone when you see the hula hoop signal. Use it as a cue to remind yourself to do the tongue hula. Other options to mitigate the effects of salivary gland hyperfunction include staying adequately hydrated and using a humidifier. You can also use a sialogog, which is a fancy name for a saliva substitute. These can be poured ready made or you can make a homemade version. A more exotic option is electro-stimulating. Mm, salivary pacemakers haven't gone mainstream just yet, but they are coming. Here are a few of the journal articles I've used to tell the saliva story. Saliva hyperfunction is just one of hundreds of things in the body that are amiss when you're insulin resistant. Subscribe to our channel to learn more about some of the other players in our ups and downs of insulin resistance series. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health.